Hey guys, it's Nexo here, and welcome back to another reaction video. Today, I'm going to be reacting to The Angry Video Game Nerd, Episode 1, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Um, as you can see, I'm drawing a new setup here. And as you can see by all this, I got a desk now. Like an actual desk. I don't have to use the dresser anymore. Um, but yeah. Uh, the original video link's in the description below. Make sure to go subscribe to Cinemassacre for this video I'm about to watch. Uh, and with all that said, let's get it on. This game sucks. <laughs> Castlevania 1 and 3 are great classic Nintendo games, but for Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, the game designers obviously were not thinking straight. At first, it seems like a pretty decent game. A little different from the first in the series, but that's okay. Zelda 2 is different from the first, Mario 2 is different, but they were all yeah. good. The first thing that's strikingly different is the fact that you have to go through towns, talk to people, and buy stuff. Never really minded that, it makes it a little more like an adventure story, and it's kind of like Zelda, so that's okay. But the first problem comes in when it changes from day to night. Oh. What a horrible night to have a curse. That takes way too long. Why does this need to happen so often? Like every five minutes? Why does it take so long? Nobody feels like sitting through this every time. How would you like it if you were playing a game and then every five minutes I came over and paused it, then counted ten tedious seconds and <laughs> let you continue to play the game? Now, I mean, why did they think that that would be a good idea and interrupt the gameplay? Did they think it would be more realistic? I mean, in real life, I don't have to stop in my tracks when the sun sets and a fucking box doesn't pop up in the air. Everybody I mean, this is one of the most annoying sets. features in any game ever. What's the point? Yeah, I mean, the monsters are stronger at night and the stores are closed, but why is that necessary and why does the game have to stop? It's fucking retarded. <laughs> And why do you have to die when you fall in the water? That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. This guy can go all over fighting hordes of evil monsters, but he can't even fucking swim? I don't know, he's carrying that heavy whip with him. Sometimes I don't feel like going down the stairs just to get down to ground level. I mean, there's no reason I should have to do that when I can just take a shortcut and jump down. But <laughs> oops, I shouldn't do that. There oh my might be God. water down there. Another thing that's really annoying about this game is the fact that you have to buy weapons and items. I mean, still, that's not uncommon. You know, yeah. like I said, that's the same thing you have to do in many great games like Zelda. But let me explain. Again, referring to Zelda. Here you have to collect hearts, which count as money. I mean, that's kind of odd because usually hearts count as life or energy. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of strange. But, you know, that's not the point. The point is that the items you need to buy are too fucking expensive and the hearts don't add up enough. It takes too long to get enough of them to buy something, and it gets boring wandering around killing the same monsters over and over again just so you can buy a flame whip or something. <laughs> Speaking of flame whip, that's pretty weird itself, isn't it? I mean, they were really yeah. being creative with that one. The <laughs> flame whip. Anyway, flame about the hearts. Whip. It takes too long to buy stuff, and to add on to the problem, when you die, you lose all your hearts and you have to start all over again. I mean, doing this doesn't add to any Why? of the game's difficulty or challenge, it just makes us have to do more of the same anonymous stuff over again, and it's not fun. It's boring. Oh look, I finally got enough hearts to go and buy a plant that I need to cross the swamp. Now let me get to a the store. Plant? Oh shit, it's oh, fucking nighttime. God. Now the stores are all closed and I have to wait for it to turn day again. Oh well, I might as well kill some zombies in the meantime and stock up on some more hearts. Oh shit, now I gotta start again. all over again. This game looks awful. One of the worst things in the game are the pitfalls, which are areas where there's like stones or blocks that look like you could walk on them, but instead you just fall Why? through. Why? It's impossible to tell where these spots are the first time walking How? through, so you just have to keep throwing holy water all over to see where they are. That's a waste hard. of holy water. Why should I have to do that? Again, it doesn't add up to any of the fun, you know, challenge of the game. It's just unfair and it's annoying. In the dungeons, there's no bosses at the end, which is a big disappointment. Every Nintendo gamester knows that at the end of a level or a dungeon, labyrinth, or whatever, That's there's always dumb. supposed to be a big guy who you fight. But here, they just got lazy and only put a few bosses in the game and left some of the dungeons just empty, like this one. So most of the dungeons you go through, the mansions to be exact, there's nothing at the end except for a crystal orb that you can't touch. In the rest of the Castlevania games, the tradition goes like this. You fight a boss, you defeat him, 
then an orb comes down and you touch it. There you go, on to the next level. But in Castlevania 2, how would you ever figure out that you're supposed to throw an oak stake at that orb? What? I mean, when you first get the oak stake, you assume it's a weapon, and you throw it only to find that it does absolutely nothing, and that you waste it by throwing it, so you have to get it all over again. There are parts in the game that are definitely not self-explanatory and are too hard to figure out. Take this dead end, for example. Would you guess that you're supposed to pass through this wall? How? How? You have to kneel down by it for like Jeez. 10 seconds. Now still, that's not enough to make it so cryptic and hidden that we can't figure it out. Oh, please still. give us more for our buck and make it harder so we can wander around the whole game and exhaust every possibility before we find out. Okay, guess what? You need to have a red crystal selected and be kneeling down and wait a little while before this magic tornado comes and takes you to the next part of the game. No. How is anyone supposed to know that? Most of the townspeople have things to say which aren't important at all, so why do you have to read them? Here in the dungeons, there's books that you may find which actually give you clues about things in the game that you may need clues to know really about. Cryptic. But when I find these books half the time, it's by accident. So I may hit the button and cancel it out, which means that I don't even get to read it and I don't have a second mm. chance. Wow. Why can't I do that when it changes from day to night? That would actually be helpful. So what the game designers figured is this. It isn't absolutely necessary for me to read about how to find Dracula's castle or what I'm supposed to do with an oak stake. But what I do need to read, again and again constantly, is the morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. How about vanquish this horrible mm -hmm. game? The only sure way to get through this awful game is to enter a code, but even that is way more tedious than it should be. While most of the Castlevania games have symbols you enter for a code, this one just has a whole bunch of numbers. And letters. I mean, like, one of those little parts would be enough for a password, but why four? Like, why so many? In general, I hate games that have passwords like this because sometimes they have uppercase and lowercase letters, like the L's, you know look like I's, the zeros look like O's, the eights look like fives, That's so, stupid. you know, why does there have to be so many digits? You know, like, why can't it just be numbers or something? Like, you know, just numbers and not letters. I mean, it takes me like five minutes to enter this code when it should only take like five seconds. It's friggin' stupid. Okay, so, say we enter the code and we go to Dracula's castle. So you didn't? You'll be pretty disappointed how anticlimactic this game is. It isn't even worth putting in a code let alone playing the whole game all the way through, which if you did, I feel bad for you. I mean, first of all, there's no enemies in Dracula's why? castle. You just walk just all the way through, and the why? only obstacles are just like going up and down steps, which won't hurt you, and they aren't challenging either. They're just tedious. I mean, what the hell is the point of going through the castle if there's nobody to fight? Did the game designers just like run out of time or something? So then you get up he to Dracula, so and guess what? Dumb. He doesn't look anything like Dracula. Instead, he looks like a grim reaper, and he throws sickles. I mean, did the people who made this game even know what Dracula I doubt is? That. He's a fucking vampire. Alright, on top of everything, Dracula is way too easy. Check this out. This is a trick that I discovered myself, and so could you without the help of any strategy really? guide. When Dracula first appears, he stands there for a while, and he gives you plenty of time to land lots of free hits. Not only does he stand there for a long time, but everything that hits him will stun him and give you even more time. Naturally, wow. you'll probably be using the flames because it's one of the most effective weapons in the game, but using it against Dracula it makes it simply impossible for him to even Broke. do anything. He has no chance. The second you start throwing that shit at him, you've already won. I mean, why is it that easy? Did they even test the shitty game out before they released it? What a piece of shit. I mean, I feel horrible that I had to play this game in order to make this video, but I did it to demonstrate its dreadfulness and I forced myself to play it just so that you don't have to. So you should thank me for telling you to stay away from this horrible steaming pile of goat shit. Thank I you, mean, nerd. I know it's useless complaining about a game that was made back in the late 80s or earlier 90s or whatever, <laughs> but it just blows my mind how fucking horrible it is. I mean, it's consistently annoying. Why? Why is it so bad? If all these problems were changed, then we'd have a great trilogy of classic Castlevania games, but history is history, and we might as well try to count Castlevania 3 as, you know, the second in the series <laughs> and leave this awful piece of horseshit alone as it stands today as one of the biggest fuck-ups of all time. Thank you for listening. Good night.
the ending sucks <laughs> too. Wow, that was great. Um, wow. Um, I never thought someone could. I mean, he wasn't that angry, but he was just just annoyed more than anything. And still, it it sent a message like this game sucks. Don't play it. It's wow. Now I know what game to stay away from. I'm a pretty big Castlevania uh, fan myself. Never played the second one, and probably for good reason. But, with all that, that, don't oh, shoot, I just knocked over Doofenshmirtz. Uh, that's the end of the video. Um, once again, the original video link is in the description below, so make sure to subscribe to Cinemassacre, Angry Video Game Nerd, for this video. And if you like my reaction, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and share to spread the love around and join the crew today. My name is Next Fuss. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay away from crappy games. And if you decide to play the crappy games, make sure he did an episode on it. And see for yourself. Or don't, because the game sucks. See you guys next time.